Thanks for coming. Um, this is the hardware management module lightning talk session number two. My name's Chen. Um, let's just get into the demos. So we have six demos from four companies. Uh, three topics, run BMC demo, LTPA demo, and the DCSCN demo by the list of companies. And since we have six, we can't fit them all in one session. We split it out into three talks over two days. So a recap from yesterday, uh, Intel presented the DCACM 2.0 LTPI demo details. You can come visit our booth to, to see in action. And then the Cyclone 5 FPGA run BMC demo. And lastly, the Intel DCACM 2.0 module. So our, uh, the booth is back there. Um, welcome to come visit us. I'll pass it on to Manure. He will talk about the latest demos. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. So uh, th thanks a lot for allowing me to talk. Uh, my name is Munir Ahmad. I'm from Lattice Semiconductor. And uh, we have a demo in our booth over there. And, uh, what is interesting about the demo that we have is uh, we're going to show the DCSCM. We're showing the DCSCM LTPI, which we all know, and also some functions of the PFR, the platform farmer resiliency, right? Uh, so if you look at uh, the DCSCM, it's a pretty much, a, I would say, a general evaluation of the server, right? If you look at the server, it is pretty much the four components. You have a compute, you have a storage, you have I.O., and you have a management sections, right? And if you look at that I.O. and the storage, they're already modular. You know, you can, you know, they don't depend on the CPU generation, typically. So what happened is that any time the motherboard vendor wanted to spawn up a new CPU, they have to also come up with the new BMC routing, security routing, control routing. So the DCSC basically separated, you know what? Uh, the management function doesn't depend on the CPU generations, right? So they separated the uh, three things out of the, DC, you know, uh, the processing board or motherboard, uh, which is the management, BNC functions, and security, uh, and also the control functions, some form of the control functions, which we say is an LTPI, it's a new interface defined in the DCSCM spec, and you know that. So <clears throat> with that, uh, what, we, what we say that if you look at uh, today in the DCSCM module, you have the BMC chip, you have a security chip, and you also have a chip that goes through LTPI for control functions, right? For simplicity perspective, uh, why can't you combine these two together, right? You know, obviously at the end of the goal is going to be if you combine all three functions together, one single chip, that would be the golden for the motherboard manufacturers, right? Whoever does the DCSM board. But at least today in the demo that we are showing that you can actually combine the LTPI and the PFR functions together in a single APGA. And if you look at the NIST compliance and also Intel PFR compliance, the PFR 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, uh, pretty much they're saying that for the security hardware root of trust, uh, which uh, mostly for a pre-boot and post-boot condition, you need an FPGA because that's the programmability of the FPGA that can give you the security functions, right? So that's uh, we are trying to do is that we're trying to show that uh, FPGA can offer the possibility of security and the uh, you know, control functions together. And that's basically a simplification that we are talking about, right? So obviously it will save cost, development time, and validation effort. Uh, so what is, if you look at the security, right? Firmware security is a major concern. And I'm specifically, like, if you look at this, some of the previous firmware, like a BIOS and BMC, uh, uh, these are pretty much the most important one uh, that if somebody hacks it, they can easily go and you know, behind your system, do whatever they want to do. Uh, the part of it is that if you look at it, you want to make sure that when you boot up, you boot up is a known good system. That means you need to hold the boot uh, before you can validate the format that you're trying to boot up from is a authenticated firmware, it's a validated firmware, right? And that's what all the disk compliance, that's what PFR does, that you need to make sure that you detect any kind of firmware protection, you know, any kind of firmware issues, whether it's a, you know, 
um, it, it's not a valid image or it's a, it's a hacked image. You need to do it before, at the power on, before you allow the system to boot up. And obviously, after the system is boots up, you need to validate that, right? Uh, but to do that, you need to have a hookup, right? You need to have a control hookup, right? You need to have something that you can control the system with. Uh, you can hold the power of the system, right? And that's what you know we can do because if you look at today, the, pretty much all the CPLD is based on a PGA, which CPLD holds the system in reset mode, and it can hold the system in reset mode, validate the format, and then allow the reset mode to go on, and then system can boot up properly, right? That's what the whole idea is. Sorry, guys, <laughs> my phone. Yeah, I didn't forget to turn off the phone. And then obviously recovery. In case if you find out that your uh, your image is not authenticated, you have to weigh a mechanism to go alternate you know, uh, image to boot up from. And it could be anything. It could be BIOS, BMC, any of the previous format you want. But that's the whole idea here, this, right? And then protection, obviously. You want to make sure that nobody can snoop, nobody can write an I2C read that they're not supposed to read, right? or nobody can do an I2C write on a flash area that is protected by you, right? Protected by the system, right? And so another thing is the protection, that's what we offer. So the demo that we are showing today is, uh, we do have the full PFR function, but the demo that we're showing is basically the monitoring function and the LTPA control functions together. Uh, and this is ob obviously this is also the NIST compliance. You know, you know NIST has 800-193 compliance. So we are fully compliant to that. And thanks to Intel, we are also fully compliant to Intel PFR functions as well. And uh, uh, so, so the next one. Uh, this is the you know we are basically it is a very simple demo that we are showing. Uh, as you can see, on the left side is the. HPM side and uh, right side is the SCM side. Uh, and uh, basically, we do have, we have a Raspberry Pi on the left side, which is emulating the CPU. And you have another Pi processor on the right side. Uh, I don't know if it works or not. OK. <laughs> uh, right side, which actually doing the BMC. And what we're doing here is uh, uh, we also put this two board has a DCSA, you know, DCSA connector, as you can see here. There's a uh, DCSA connector here, and we put our XO 3D chip, you know, uh, which actually uh, run that uh, demo. So this particular one that we're showing, uh, it does a few things. Uh, so before that, let me go to the key features that our LTPI, uh, what it does. And by the way, uh, we are fully compliant to LTPI 1.0 spec. If you look at, uh, you know, there is a big difference between 0.7 to 1.0. I know there's a lot of uh, 0.7 version is allowed there, uh, but we, with Intel, we together we developed the 1.0, and our LTPI is fully compliant to that. And from the feature perspective, it supports GPIO, I2C, EWART, uh, OEM channel, data channel design. Uh, it supports 800 megabits LVDS data rate. Uh, pretty much uh, most of it that you can see is that all configurable, how many I2C channel you want, how many you want, how many data channels you want. You know, these are all configurable, but uh, uh, you know, I think ultimate goal is to have the configurability fixed, because that's what we, we want to work with. Basically, at the end of the day, it should not be the both side us, right? You know, DCSCM, the whole idea here is that it's a standard interface. We can talk to our one, maybe Intel or going or some other chip, right? So that configuration is, still needs to be defined. And I'm working with Intel on that one as well. Uh, but today, this is what the capabilities we have today, right? And we are still working on that. So EWART, this is just some of the, you know, I just took some pictures of our demo. And this is just showing some of the things that uh, it can do. So basically, it's showing the EWART going back and forth. SCM side is sending some messages. HPM side is receiving it. Uh, and uh, you know, I can, you can see there is a Raspberry Pi on the HPM side. Uh, similar on the SCM side, that basically talking between each other. We also have a GPIO <coughs> and I2C. The last one is the I2C monitor that I want to show. What you know, it's, it's you know, it's, it's not a live demo, but you can see in the booth here that we have. But basically, you know, the, if you have a platform manifest that shows this is the I2C command that you want to go through for a certain area, you can actually monitor that. On this particular one, you know, if you want to block the red color, it will block the red color. You cannot send it, right? That's that's the whole idea here. It is, uh, but the, in a true implication. 
We're supposed to have a manifest that says, okay, what well, this ice cross CD can only allow to this flash address space, right? Or this cannot go through that, or read or write, all those things. That should be the true manifest. Similarly, spy flash, the demo is just showing the ice cross monitoring functions today. With that, I think I'm pretty much 10 minutes up. Thank you all. Any? Thank you.